the people uh, has impressed me a lot, to be honest. The, the players, the character, the personality, but uh, the staff and around the place, how friendly and dedicated and hard-working they are, but just, just genuinely good people, which is uh, fantastic to see. I've not missed playing, to be honest. I was ready to finish and retire when I, when I, um, when I made that decision. And, and since then, I've not, I've not missed playing. Uh, I appreciate it well, I did, but I've not missed it. I don't train with the lads. I try not to get involved with the lads, and I enjoy the role that I'm doing now and, and, and trying to help them in different ways. I've had a couple, really. Peter Beardsley was a big one. Um, Brought up in Newcastle and I was a big fan of the way he played. Paul Gascoigne, another one, was loved watching him um, as a kid, seeing this, uh, uh, what he got up to and how he behaved on the pitch and how much fun he was having and how good he was. He was they're probably the two that uh, that stand out the most for us. Best moment in my career was winning the Champions League 2008. Um, best feeling I've ever had. Um, and. Yeah, that 30 seconds of adrenaline and emotion after the, we kind of won on penalties and Edwin saved that pen was the best feeling I've ever had. Been lucky enough to play in a few nice ones, actually. Um, San Siro, in terms of um, atmosphere, was pretty special. Um, Celtic was loud, played them in the Champions League, very loud. Um, Besiktas, um, not a big stadium, but the place was absolutely bouncing. I thought it was going to fall down. Um, that atmosphere was incredible. Um, and Old Trafford is, is, is one where I played most of my football, so it's a big favourite of mine. Probably, yeah, without realising, I think a lot of it is experience and kind of seeing things before and um, acting in a certain way or thinking about things in a certain way because kind of he taught us that as players and he kind of rubs off. So there's probably... It's probably a, bit, a fair bit, and yeah, of course, in times when there's things going on or decisions to be made, it kind of you try and draw on that experience, and it, so in some ways, it, it helps us more than I've probably realised. I remember playing against Paul Ince directly um, when I was at West Ham. That was, um, you know, I was, I was young at the time. I was 19, 19 and, and, and he was a little bit further on in his career, but. Um, Terrific footballer, and it was, it was a real test to, to play against him at the Riverside. I haven't had many happy um, journeys to the Riverside, so it was always a hard place to come and play. It was always um, a really good atmosphere, and um, yeah, I didn't really have too many good results, I don't think, over the years. We had one or two, but um, so yeah, passionate, um, really enthusiastic, loud, and, and, and a hell of a support. And, was always always been a tough place to come, so that's what we're trying to to keep going and improving on. First of all, I, I say to a lot of younger players, any regardless of your position, I think to you got to enjoy what you're doing and you got to work hard. I think work hard um, an underrated um, skill, if you like, and and someone able to sustain it. So I say work hard, give absolutely everything you have, but you got to enjoy it while you're doing it. Um, and it depends what type of player you are, you know, if you're if you one that's a little bit more defensive then um, if you're a little bit more attacking or passing or like to get on the ball, I think the biggest thing I can say is play to your strengths and work on your strengths and make your strength your strengths super strengths and be as good as you possibly can be. Yeah, I had a good experience with the championship and unfortunately it was relegated to West Ham when I was younger, when I was um nineteen twenty going on 21 and um, so I had a good experience of it over, over a period of time we lost in the playoff final and um, obviously over the years playing against championship teams and it, it's always been a tough challenge and, and, and I know the league um, is very unpredictable at times and unforgiving and you've got to be consistent so I've, I've been, uh, I haven't been surprised by anything but really impressed with the standard and um, the, the kind of constant challenge that you face within the league. I probably haven't got one highlight as such. I think it's just um, over a period of time work, working with working with everybody, seeing the players develop, seeing seeing um, everyone enjoy it and appreciate the team, and um, looking forward to come and watch the team with, with an excitement and a, and, a, and a smile and an enthusiasm. Um, so proud to, to, to see everyone f and and, and um, feel everyone 
having that emotion really and um, we're trying to build on that as we go along. I don't know, I think you just got to be yourself really and um, yeah, and it's, sometimes you look calm, sometimes in your mind there's a lot going through your mind in terms of decisions and what you've got to do within the game and how you can change the game, how you need to tweak things and what information you give to the players at half-time, full-time, so there's a lot going through um, and I just find it easier to think clearly when I'm, when I'm a little bit calmer and um, a little bit more focused, so I, that's why I try to stay that way. I don't think there's any secret. I think it's um, I just try to treat them in a certain way and, and try to get um, them to believe in themselves. I certainly believe in them and trying to get them to express themselves and do what they're good at. Um, there's, there's certainly no secret. There's not one way to go about making a player better or making a team better. Um, it's a constant um, challenge every day to, to try and do things that, that bring out the best in them. I'm more, I only really use the notepad first half and it's more just um, key points for half time, what I need to say to the boys and, and um, sometimes it's tactical, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's a little bit more emotional, it just depends on the, fit, the type of game or what, what I feel is needed at half time, so it, it's as simple as that really, it's never normally that complicated, um, it's just more just for me to, to um, be a little bit clearer in my head what I want to say at half time. I do really like the chant, yeah, I think it's a fantastic song, you keep singing it if you want. Um, I don't have a favourite one as such, I, th I just think um, I grew up watching football and going to football with, with my dad and, and appreciating what it was like then on the terraces and sitting on um, sitting on the terraces and supporting and singing, so any, any, any song that creates an atmosphere and an energy within the stadium, I'm all for it. I've played once, yeah. Um, and I shot 80, which was pretty much kind of where I'm at with my golf at the moment. Oh, biscuit! I do like my biscuits. That's one of my um, my, one of my problems, really. I eat too many biscuits. Um, I do like a good old chocolate digestive. I have to say. Uh, I do have a pet. Yeah, we got a dog. Uh, King Charles um, and I've got a couple of horses at home as well that my daughter rides so I suppose you can class them as pets and I end up looking after them so I really like Barbados I've gone quite a bit over the years and I really like it and Ibiza actually with a family with the kids with the wife with my friends it's a place where we can do a lot of different things, so they're the two really that stand out and I'm one for, once I find somewhere I tend to go back to the same place because I know what I'm getting. I'm not one for trying loads of different things, so it's a bit boring, but it works for us. <laughs>